All right, welcome friends. It is 530. Let's get straight to our team coverage this morning. There's a lot to share with you. We have to talk about a few different things in our area happening as we speak. Carlos Herrera is in Sacramento where a fire started early this morning near International Airport. Photographer Mark Willis is in Modesto where an auto shop is burning and another one in the city ignited near Enzlin Avenue and Roseburg Avenue. In Tracy, 11 homes were destroyed. Rob is in the Weather Center right now with how the wind is not helping with firefighters. And we're going to start, though, with Carlos, who is near the airport. Carlos, what's happening there? Well, you can see the sun beginning to rise this morning. What's left behind from this fire? Char on the ground and, of course, smoke billowing into the air. But I really want to show you what I showed you uh, in the last half hour. Here's that power pole. Not burning anymore, but still some smoke billowing into the air as well. We saw some uh, airport employees driving by here. This is on power line and near Alberta. And they said they were just checking the, the uh, area and making sure that there weren't any hot spots. So they did call uh, firefighters to make sure they check on it. But again, they use an extinguisher. And this, fi uh, this power pole that we showed you in the last half hour is now okay. There were embers flying in or sparking into the nearby areas. Now this is uh, started uh, just around 1 a.m. This is a uh, property just adjacent to the Sacramento International Airport, just east of it and uh, north of uh, I-5. And again, just down this road here, you can see uh, this is a uh, power line road is Amazon building. The good news this morning is that if firefighters were able to get a handle on this and the fire is under control but the big concern here is the wind you can see it here moving my shirt and of course dry grass on the ground the nearby areas that was what's causing the fire to kind of move towards highway 99 earlier this morning but the good news is that it is under control Walt you mentioned in the last half hour that all flights from Sacramento International are on schedule mm -hmm. we did see one uh, Southwest flight depart and it was on time. So that's the good news. All right, all good to know, Carlos, and that uh, everything seems to be handled and you're in. Let's go to Tracy, where a fire damaged 11 homes Sunday evening. It started as a grass fire, then jumped a canal, taking over parts of a subdivision and a mobile home park. This is in the area of Grant Line Road and North MacArthur Drive. At least one person was treated for smoke inhalation. And now you're looking live at a fire burning in Modesto. This is at an abandoned auto shop south of Modesto Junior College, exactly North 9th Street near Tully Road. This auto shop has been vacant for about 20 years, we we're told. Fire crews do have this one under control, but they are worried the wind that Rob's been talking about could blow the embers and threaten areas around it. Again, live in Modesto. Shortly after, a second fire ignited in a neighborhood near Ensland Avenue and Roseburg Avenue in Modesto. We don't have any reports of injuries there. The cause of both of the Modesto fires remains under investigation. Okay, Rob, we set the table here for you. Uh, you saw Carlos talking about uh, how windy it is out there, which is the firefighter's worst nightmare. Exactly. Uh, you know, we look at the wind in a couple of different ways. Usually, when I'm talking about the wind in summer, and especially when it's coming in off the ocean like it is, it's a cooling wind, it keeps the temperatures down, we like it. But uh, I'll tell you, out here in the Gilmore backyard, it's nice and refreshing, but you saw what it did with those ongoing fires. Remember, everything is dry right now, so anything that starts, if it's windy, there's a good side of it and there's a bad side of it. So we're, we're seeing both of those mixed together early this morning. Let's go ahead and show you what's going on here. Uh, we did see a nice drop from the 80, from the 90s to the 80s, all because of the wind. And it is fairly strong for the early morning hours. I will say this, I haven't seen it this consistently strong through the overnight hours in a while. So if you wake up this morning, not only are we in the 50s, but you throw in the breeze, it's quite chilly out there. Uh, we're gonna see temperatures that are gonna be moving up into the low to mid 80s today. So this is gonna be another nice July day tough to get days in the 80s. We had one yesterday. We're going to have another one today and I think another one tomorrow. But by the end of the week, as the wind shifts around to a different direction, that means we warm up close to 100 by the end of the week. TC? Thanks, Rob. All right, we heard Carlos talk about the fire that's going on near uh, the Sacramento International Airport. 
right now I checked there are no traffic delays in the area and there's also uh, no delays with flights which is awesome but you don't want to be like this guy this guy running through the airport leave early just in case some of those delays do start to show up also just got word about a car fire on I-80 right now the cameras aren't showing it however according to CHP help is on the way so if you are going on I-80 you know what build in a little extra time because I have a feeling traffic might be building up there. We're going to keep you updated on air online. And right now, Kirsten's got some more for you. Yes, 535 right now, TC. This morning, people are still on edge after a magnitude 7.1 earthquake shook the city of Ridgecrest. It's about an hour and a half north of L.A. Now, if you got a second, take a look at your TV screens right now. The woman you see there is knocked over and almost fell by her pool. This is new video from Kern County, and it shows just how violent the shaking was near the epicenter in Ridgecrest. This happened just a day after that magnitude 6.4 earthquake. Our Ananda Rochita has been in the area near the epicenter. You're in the community of Trona this morning. Ananda, tell us what's going on. Here at Truesdale Estates, this is one of the hardest hit areas in Ridgecrest, and I want to show you why. A majority of the people have left because of these signs saying danger. This building is deemed unsafe for human occupancy, and nearly every mobile home that we pass by here has some kind of some uh, something like this um, posted. And while we may be at one of the hardest hit areas, we went to one of the hardest hit communities called Trona. It's about 30 miles east of Ridgecrest. Um, I want to show you a video of what we've seen since we've been here. The earthquake has impacted nearly every person we met, whether they have cracks in their homes, surrounding their homes, or they are sleeping outside because they're too scared. A family met yesterday was camping outside of their home, and five of them were sharing a tent. At a town hall meeting yesterday in Ridgecrest, officials talked about the reality of PTSD and that it is real, especially with these aftershocks. Um, a family I spoke with in Trona, um, she said that she's not been able to sleep for days. I asked her a little bit more about that, and she told me that with these aftershocks she wakes up almost nearly every hour and the first thing that she does is head over to her baby's crib every single time i asked her what could help with that what could help with her getting a good night's sleep and she said moving but that's not really an option right now kirsten really devastating situation there our thoughts and our prayers are with those families affected all right so let's get to some other stories that are making headlines for you right now in your daily blend Natalie Corona Highway, the fallen Davis police officer, is now being remembered in a big way. The state assembly and Senate both passed a resolution over the holiday weekend that will rename a portion of I-5 in Calusa County after Officer Natalie Corona. Border battle. Both political parties are now calling conditions there a crisis and President Trump continues to defend migrant detention facilities and the border patrol agents who run them. This Friday, the House Oversight Committee will hold a hearing to question administration officials about the conditions. Champions again, the United States women won their second consecutive World Cup. Yesterday in France with a 2-0 win, this came over the Netherlands. Reading native Megan Rapino scored the first goal and won the golden boot as the tournament's top player. Okay, so you know that brings us to our poll question today. Should the U.S. women's soccer team be paid just the same amount as the men's? That's what a lot of you have been talking about on social media. So we're asking the question, and right now, 79% of you are saying, yeah, go to abc10.com slash vote if you want to cast your ballot or just open up our app. It's real easy. So that is your daily blend of news and information. If you've got something you want to share with us, when you see it online, just use the hashtag MorningBlend10.